Welcome home to a disaster zone. Okay. Yeah. Talk to me. What's going on right now? So basically, I just walked up into this house, and uh, first thing I noticed was the back door was open. So that's why I just did a sweep of the building to make sure there ain't nobody in here sleeping or nothing because of the cold or somebody broke in for whatever reason. So it's kind of cold out today on this nice, sunny, cold St. Louis day. So that was the first thing I want to do is make sure nobody is in this house while I'm walking around. They jump out of a closet or jump out, hey, what are you doing here? Or, you know, anything. You know, this house is supposed to be vacant, been vacant for a few months now. But as you can tell, there's plenty of stuff in this house. Remnants of doorway, beds, mattresses, um, furniture. Some of the stuff may be able to be saved, but majority of it's going straight in the dumpster. But nevertheless, I'm really here to, to check out the condition of the house to see if it's really just cosmetic stuff that the house needs or something major. And uh, that's basically what I'm doing right now. Up here, it looks like they got a den. I don't know if that's a real fireplace or a working fireplace. Probably not. Looks like it's just a little fake one. But sometimes if you find an old house like this in South St. Louis, brick house, you know, you find nice fireplaces that actually work that can, you know, keep the house warm and things like that. It has something special installed over here. It looks like some kind of security system or some kind of smart device. I don't think anything's working because there's no electricity working in this house right now. So this house is actually a, a house that's behind on payments. The homeowner uh, is basically walking away from the house and uh, they just don't want to give the house to the bank. They want somebody to either buy it or either, um, basically they just want to sell the house. They don't want it no more. They're removed from it. As you can tell, I even asked them on the phone, is there anything here that you would like to keep or anything like that? I always ask and talk to the sellers. It's very important to speak to them and ask them how they feel about the situation. Are they removed from it mentally? Because losing your house or giving away your house or selling your house can be a major thing in a person's life, as people may know. Maybe one of the biggest things people would do in their life. Mm. So this house has been, you know, trashed out. Like I said, this door was open though when I came in. That's why I just went through it to check it to make sure. So normally when I go to a house, first thing I do is usually try to walk around the outside of the house. I would have seen that, but this house, I didn't do that. I went straight in the front door through the lockbox, and that's when I noticed that this door was open, mm. which is like I said, a no-go. You don't want to walk into a house with a door open because somebody could be in there selling drugs or living there or anything. You know, you don't know. It could be an animal in there to walk in. A big dog can be living in there. Anything. So you always want to be conscious of your surroundings. Right. Now this thing here is a major, this tree, because the uh, house is kind of buffling up the sidewalk here, that could probably cause some plumbing issues inside the house. Uh, this tree probably going to even have to get cut down or something because it's actually causing some type of leak in the basement from what they told me mm. as well. But I haven't seen the basement yet. Well, I looked, but I didn't see it all the way. It has a detached garage, which is a plus over here. When you're in the city houses, you want to think about parking, you know, this makes it a, a an increased value over here. Most of the houses, I see there's a few other garages, but just because this one has a parking garage off street, when you're dealing in city, major metropolitan areas, you want to have a place that you can park where it's dedicated to you, not just at the whims of everybody else in the neighborhood. So yeah, nice garage here, don't seem bad. I don't see any water leaking in or anything like that. Nice dry place to store stuff and park your vehicle. And it looks like they pretty much moved out. They just left remnants. Like I say, a lot of this stuff will be trashed out, thrown out into a dumpster. So another thing, when you're looking at the exterior of these houses, you want to check the roof. You want to see if the roof looks like it's shingles missing or any kind of damage or a tree has fell on it, anything like that, because the roof can become a major fix on a house. Roofs, foundations, some of the major elements as well, or if you got uh, you know, certain things in the house that need to be fixed. But mostly it looks like cosmetic so far, other than this big tree. Generally, a tree is going to cost you about $1,000 to get cut down, depending on your area, unless you know somebody. You got to know somebody to stay woke. Yep, so they don't have any copper in this house, it doesn't look like, so that kind of helps. To, probably somebody came in here looking for it, but they didn't find any. They got sadly upset. <laughs> but like I said, this house doesn't look too bad. It's more so clean up, clean out from what I can tell here, until we see upstairs. This carpet is definitely probably going to be replaced or cleaned up, because it's pretty bad too. Definitely needs paint. No question about that. Yep, needs carpet up here too. Carpet, paint, cosmetic. So I was told that this house is a three bedroom, one bath. This is definitely a bedroom. And there's a bedroom over there and a bathroom over there, but I don't know if there was a third one downstairs. I didn't see one. So it looks like it's really a two. So I'm looking at the damage in here. It's all cosmetic stuff. All the holes in the walls. All of this stuff's a sign of distress. 
So this house is, uh, like I said, the, the seller will probably just give this to the bank if we're not able to do something with it via either we would do a short sale or we would negotiate with the bank to take a reduced amount or we could do an actual uh, a subject to where we would just take over the payments, catch up the back payments. She owes about $7,000 in back payments to catch this loan up to bring it current. And the payments are about $900 a month. P-I-T-I, -I, which is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, which is whenever you count mortgages or loans on houses, you want to be an all-inclusive payment to make sure that everything's counted for when you're doing your numbers to make sure that if it's a good deal or not. So the area this house is in is in a good area in Tower Grove. So if this was all fixed up, this could potentially be an Airbnb. Uh, you can use it as a traditional rental. Uh, it could also be a lease option where we would do some type of rent to own type of uh, create a finance deal for somebody who wants to become a homeowner. So this house has a lot of potential. It just does need some work from what I've seen so far. Some work and then here's a bathroom. So uh, yeah, needs a new vanity because that's all torn up. Uh, probably a new toilet. Uh, yeah, pretty much. That's all you can do in here. So, I mean, you probably just need a whole new setup for a bathroom. But other than that, any questions for me? <laughs> What's the uh, biggest, um, the biggest thing that people miss when they come in looking at a property? Uh, just making sure the majors, you know, that's the the main thing because the cosmetic stuff, you're not really going to waste too much time on it because you're going to throw money at it. And say if it's an extra $100 or $200 here, you can't waste a lot of time on it. You have to do it in chunks, $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 in repairs. You don't want to go in and try to say, oh, every little detail until it's time, until you actually have it under contract and you're doing your inspection. Now, that's something different than this. This is like an initial walkthrough, my first time taking a look at this house to see if it's something we even want to deal with. Like I said, they need seven thousand dollars in back payments to catch this loan up that's going to be another maybe thousand dollars in closing costs so that's eight thousand right there then you got to count all of this repair costs we're talking at least fifteen thousand dollars or more in just repair so you look you twenty six thousand dollars in already and haven't even made one dollar on the house but i mean if you can get a house this house is worth about uh i'm trying to think what did this house was i want to say this house was one 140 150 ARV after repair value. If you can get into a house for you know twenty six thousand, that's worth about one hundred and forty thousand. I mean, is that a win win or what? So that's just uh, one of the things I look for when I'm looking at these houses. What's the biggest uh, barrier to entry when it kind of playing this real estate game? Biggest barrier is yourself, lack of knowledge, not taking the time to say how do I do this? Because you can do this game with no money, no credit. I talk about it all the time on my YouTube channel at Chris Monroe STL all the time just go over all the details you know you can wholesale this deal you can put it under contract and assign that contract to somebody else to, so they can come in and do all this work and do all this stuff if you don't want to get into that you can also um like i say the biggest thing is just yourself that, that's basically the summary of it it's the person themselves they stop themselves from getting into it i mean it can get bad like this house it can be good i'm going to look at a pretty house too uh that's going to be in excellent condition nothing wrong with it from what i've seen just got distressed paper on it, meaning the loan is bad, the uh, seller had financial distress, and so we basically come in and try to see if we can help them out. Okay. What a, um, what kind of timeline would you be looking at purchasing the house, closing it, um, turning it around, and making a full profit? Yeah, something like this, I mean, it would probably take a few months, maybe three months, if mm -hmm. that long. Maybe sooner, depending on what exit strategy is used. If it's going to be as an Airbnb or a traditional rental, it will be a little longer out, three to four months. If it's going to be something that we just put under contract and assign to somebody else, it can be 10 days. You can get a check 10 days from now. That's how quick this game works. As soon mm -hmm. as title work is clear, so basically how it works, you get under contract with the seller. You take that contract to the title company. They do a title search, and then uh, they find out that the, the liens are on there. They'll say it's a mortgage on there or any other liens. We know about the mortgage because that's there. So as long as we know what's going on, we can figure out that, yeah, this title is clear or this uh, paperwork, this house is clear to close. We go ahead and get a uh, end buyer and basically we, we make our money from there. We assign our contract over to them. Really that easy. Another trick when you're walking in these basements, you always make sure you don't walk into no spider web, you know. <laughs> That's how they know. One of the sellers even sold me her house. She said, oh, you must did this before. She, you know not to walk into no spider webs. <laughs> yeah, well, I walk in enough basements to know we don't want no problem eating no spider webs. <laughs> So as you see, more junk down here as usual. Um, I don't care about the junk because like I said, that's all getting thrown out. What we're looking for in this basement is, you know, hot water heater. This looks to be newer, newer condition. 
and uh, you know, our furnace and everything looks good. We even get a washer and dryer. How about that? And hair to wash and dryer with every house has been happening to me for some reason. Um, mm. Most of the times we can say that it's a walkout basement. That's another good plus here that we can actually walk outside straight from here without going up those narrow steps so you can move stuff in and out pretty easily. Now, I don't see any water in here, but let me pull out a cheap light. Cheap light. It One does thing. smell as this water down here, but I don't see any yet. One thing I'm thinking about that's beautiful about what you bring to the table is your business. Ain't this kind of like a symbiotic business for you too? Real estate? Yeah, real estate is everybody. I mean, it, the biggest thing is it's not just that it's symbiotic to me. It's symbiotic to everybody because you're not leaving the planet Earth. Real estate is the planet Earth. We're everywhere. You're not leaving here, so you got to live somewhere. You got to work somewhere. Everybody's going to touch it. So whether you, you can get on the a side of the equation where you're paying rent or you can get on the other side where you're the owner and you're receiving rent. So I always tell people to get on the other side of that equation. Mm. Uh, I generally don't do those types. I usually do houses that need a little bit of, uh, you know, light rehab, stuff like this. I don't do too much major stuff. If it does, I might wholesale it off to somebody else or just sell it to an end buyer who will do it themselves. Like uh, the house I have in Oakville, uh, that house has some water coming into the basement. So the uh, person that I sold it to, they're going to tackle that. They're going to spend the, the twelve to $15,000 to get the foundation work done. So, you know, stuff like that, you know, depending on your numbers. See, that's why it's so important to kind of know your numbers, kind of know what your expenses are going to be overall going into a deal. So, like I said, this house is going to be $25,000, maybe up to $30,000 in expenses out of pocket to, to bring it up if you want to flip this house and put it on the MLS or if you want to do something major. Now, if you just want to get in, get a, a warm body in here, you can be in this deal for, you know, ten grand. What do you locate your buyers at? They're all over the place. Everybody who needs a house. So, I mean, you can find them on Craigslist, Facebook, OfferUp, LetGo, your buyer's list, uh, networking events with real estate investors, other people. They're always asking, hey, you know somebody got a place to rent over here? Or you got know somebody selling a house over here? You got to talk to your people because people, it's a people business. Everybody that you talk to is potentially a client or, you know, somebody that can, maybe you can help out. So either way, you want to help people out. You're either selling or you're being sold at all times. Like right now, I'm selling you. Mm -hmm. On the dream. <laughs> so, what's your opinion on being all in? What do you think about that concept? Uh, depending on all in on yourself, yes, because that's the best investment that you can make is in yourself. Be all in on you. I wouldn't put myself all in on any particular project. It's just one project. You want to have multiple things coming in, opportunities coming your way. So, you know, all in as far as your business, I would say, yeah, why not? Because some people need that motivation to get to the next hurdle, to make them get up off their butt and do something because taking action is very important in this business consistency is very important in this business consistently marketing consistently networking bringing deals and opportunities in so that you can keep that pipeline full and keep getting deals because there's plenty of deals out here are they evaluating the property is it a yay or nay to the property uh, as of right now, I think it's a yay because, like I say, it doesn't seem like anything major in here. It just needs a lot of cosmetic and clean out. Uh, that's another, what, thousand bucks and clean out, maybe a dumpster and some people to haul a bunch of junk out of here. You know, it's an expense. That's the whole thing. So one of my mentors told me that as well when I was going through a house like this down in Atlanta back in January. They said, ain't nothing wrong with this house that money won't fix. It's really that simple. Ain't nothing wrong with this house. The money won't fix. And it's all about the numbers. If the money's there, it's there. And there's plenty of money. So it's just all about can we make a deal out of this deal.